So now I want to take a look at the tautomerization reactions that happened at the end of both acid catalyzed hydration as well as hydroboration oxidation. And one takes place under acidic conditions, the first one we'll look at here, the other takes place under base conditions, and, and it turns out the mechanisms are similar but are exactly backwards. So this mechanism looks more complicated than it is. It's actually simply two proton transfer steps in a row. So we're going to need to add a proton to this carbon and then remove one from the oxygen. It's those two steps. So, and whether you protonate or deprotonate first depends on if you're acid or base. Under acidic conditions, you protonate first. Under base conditions, you deprotonate first. And that's the big difference here. So if we look at the acid catalyzed hydration mechanism, the first thing we need to do is protonate. And so the pi electrons here are going to come and grab a proton. H can only have one bond, so the other one has to break. And oftentimes, we often show uh, the oxygen electrons coming down at the same time, but I'm just going to show both resonance structures here. So as a result of gaining that hydrogen here, we now have this carbocation right here, which is stabilized by resonance with the lone pairs of electrons from the oxygen. So and from here, We've done our protonation, now we need to deprotonate. We also formed a water molecule here. So, and that water molecule can come back and now deprotonate. So, and that's it. It's simply those two proton transfer steps. It seems more complicated than this, but this is one of the more important mechanisms in this chapter, especially because we don't clearly understand several of the mechanisms that alkynes do. Well, we do understand this, and therefore, if you're going to get tested on a mechanism question, this is a very popular one on this test, both under the acid catalyzed conditions here, as well as the base catalyzed ones we'll see on the next slide. So now we'll look at the base catalyzed keto enol tautomerization that takes place at the end of hydroboration oxidation. And in this case, again, it's still just two proton transfer reactions. We're going to have to deprotonate the oxygen we see here, and we're going to have to protonate this carbon right here. That carbon right there is this one right here. Now is two H's in the product. And so that's the two things we'll need to do, one protonation, one deprotonation, and under basic conditions, you deprotonate first. So the first thing we'll do is deprotonate the hydrogen off the oxygen, cause the old bond to break, and that's going to lead us to this resonance stabilized anion. So, and we can show the other resonance structure here. There's our other resonance structure. So we will also have a water molecule now in the solution. So, and then we'll simply protonate. Now we technically probably should run this off of the major resonance contributor, which is this one over here where the negative's on the oxygen, not the negative on the carbon. So and that's what I'm gonna do here. And so technically if we were gonna do this, then dump those down and have this come and grab an H. H can only have one bond, so the old one has to break. And that would take us to our aldehyde as the product. So again, just two steps. And under base conditions, we deprotonate first and then protonate second. And that's it, exactly backwards of what we saw with acid catalyzed keto enol tautomerization. And again, these are two very important mechanisms to know for this chapter, two probably the most likely you're gonna be tested upon on a test. And you should know it both ways. Here I've shown it going from enol to either ketone or aldehyde, but you should know it going backwards as well. It's totally reversible uh, and you should know it both ways.